you might have seen cases coming with a hypernasal voice or a nasal twang to voice which make their speech difficult to understand. So what is the basic pathology or what happens to soft palate while speaking or while swallowing? Nasal cavity, uh, oral cavity, palate, so the posterior pharyngeal wall, tongue, okay, so the soft palate as well as the uvula, while during normal, normal speech, this uh, velum or the soft palate with the uvula goes posterior superiorly and this uh, posterior pharyngeal wall and the lateral pharyngeal wall will come anteriorly. Okay, so what happens? This will become a closed, there will be a closed seal between this, between this nasopharynx and the oropharynx. So that the voice produced at the level of subglot, uh, the air column or the pressure produced at the level of subglottis will come into this oropharynx and because of it is not going through this it will come through the oral cavity and the normal voice is produced but in some cases due to so many causes this mechanism is not working properly so while speech there is a gap between this uh, and because of that, this air column will come through both oropharynx and through the nasopharynx and this will cause the nasal cavity to resonate and there will be nasal twang to the voice. And that is called velopharyngeal dysfunction or velopharyngeal insufficiency or incompetence and that is today's topic. So, the today's topic is velopharyngeal or velopharyngeal VPD. We call it as VPD and under this velopharyngeal insufficiency comes velopharyngeal incompetence, velopharyngeal insufficiency and velopharyngeal mislearning. But in all standard textbooks this velopharyngeal dysfunction is used as synonym to velopharyngeal insufficiency. There is very minor difference between that that I will tell you and this uh, VPD is usually asked as short note for both undergraduates and postgraduates and more than that, this is a common clinical encounter. Okay, so what is this? You should know what is velopharyngeal dysfunction, what are the causes of velopharyngeal dysfunction, how will you evaluate this velopharyngeal dysfunction and how will you treat it. Okay, so the basic mechanism is uh, pathophysiology, I have already explained. So the causes we can divide under four main headings. One is structural, then neuromuscular, as a part of uh, developmental or faulty training, training of speech. we can uh, write under as a part of pediatric syndromes. All these are causes of this. Velopharyngeal dysfunction due to structural deformity is called velopharyngeal insufficiency or uh, VPI. Okay. And the main causes are, the most common cause of a VPI is cleft palate which can be either overt or submucosal and congenital soft soft palate. So the muscles are not working properly. So what are the muscles involved in this? Mainly the uh, elevator of soft palate that is levator veli palatini. Okay. Uh, levator veli palatini. And with the assistance of tensor valley palatin, then musculus uvulae, then 
then uh, palatoglossus and palatopharynges and also superior constrictor and also the superior constrictor muscle. So these are the muscles involved in the uh, velopharyngeal uh, closure. So these are the muscles involved in velopharyngeal closure. When they are not working properly or their congenital softness of this muscle, this is called congenital soft palate, then nasopharyngeal disproportion to uh, causes or tonsillar hypertrophy. How a velopharyngeal insufficiency is due to tonsillar hypertrophy? Tonsillar hypertrophy will cause inadequate functioning of this uh, sphincters. Okay, because of that, this sphincteric mechanism is not working properly. And scarring due to uh, surgeries. What are surgery? I already told you one is an adenoidectomy, which is common in our setup. Adenoidectomy. Or it can be due to a cleft palate repair, post cleft palate repair or any surgeries on the nasopharyngeal area can cause scarring and later causing so that this velopharyngeal port is wide open so that the air will leak through that. So that is the cause of that. So these are the structural causes otherwise the cause of velopharyngeal insufficiency. It can be due to head trauma or uh, stroke patients, cerebral palsy. Myopathy, then muscular secondary to muscular dystrophy or Parkinson's disease or amyotrophic lateral uh, myopathy or uh, neural causes like degeneration of pharyngeal plexus. So the muscles, uh, nerve supplying this all are degenerated so that there is no proper working of the muscles. So these are the uh, some causes of uh, neuromuscular causes of this uh, VPD. Then in developmental is mainly due to uh, faulty learning or faulty techniques of articulation and or alert errors in uh, articulation and usually this is picked up by the speech pathologist and what are the pediatric syndromes causing uh, this VPD? Pediatric syndromes like trisomy 21, Klippelfield syndrome, Turner syndrome, etc. Uh, can cause BPD. And the commonest cause of a BPD is usually asked, as, uh, asked in MCQs. So the commonest cause of a BPD is an overt cleft palate. And second cause uh, commonest is post adenoidectomy scarring. So the commonest overt cleft palate, then post adenoidectomy scarring and see venocardiofacial cardiofacial syndrome that is VCFS. This is due to uh, deletion of 22Q, 11, chromosome number 11. So venocardiofacial cardiofacial syndrome is the commonest cause of VPD in non-cleft patients. Okay, so this is the Common syndrome association with VPD in non-cleft patients. So cleft palate and post adenoidectomy scarring are otherwise the commonest uh, causes and also remember this usually asked in MCQs. So because of all these causes what will happen? Uh, this uh, velum or velopharyngeal uh, mechanism is not working properly. So the sound produced in the uh, vocal cord is going through both oral cavity as well as the uh, oral cavity and through the uh, nasal cavities and the produces, it produces uh, the nasal passage to resonate so that the nasal twang to voice is uh, formed so that the patient um, cannot produce consonants A, E, I, O, U A, E, I, O it will be like that so that what will happen in order to reduce the flow of air through the nasal cavity or to increase the uh, flow of air through the vocal cords, they can produce some 
uh, adaptive mechanisms, maladaptive mechanisms I say, like what? The facial grimaces. They will try to uh, reduce the flow of air through nose. So it will be, they will do like this or they will shout like anything. So that more air is uh, coming through the vocal cords and going through the oral cavity. It will sh shout so that what will happen in long term uh, period, it will, can cause vocal nodules or hoarseness of voice. So all these can happen. So facial uh, grimaces, uh, then uh, this uh, uh, shouting, vocal nodule, hoarseness are all in other sense they are all complications of this. So we have to evaluate them and we have to give them correct treatment. So how to evaluate? Under evaluation, these are the headings. A proper history is very important. You ask for any history of any already diagnosed syndromes or history of recurrent ear infection, history of a cleft palate or any surgeries in the uh, nasopharynx or in the pharynx. I already told you, surgeries can cause scarring and later on going to a more of a uh, velopharyngeal port. So, ask for any pediatric uh, syndromes, already diagnosed syndromes, then any history of cleft palate or history of recurrent ear infection or any neurological abnormalities or any surgeries in the uh, nasopharynx, oral cavity or in the pharynx and also ask for any history of OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. That is also um, important. OSA history is important. Okay, so all that should be asked in history and in the physical examination um, then oral cavity and uh, oropharynx and ear. In the nose, what all things? That is mainly the nasal mucosa, then the nasal turbinate and nasal septum. Okay, mucosa, uh, turbinate and septum should be examined in uh, particular. Okay. And in the oral cavity, you have to look for the tongue. One is the mobility of the tongue, then the oral competence also. Then in the oropharynx, the most important thing is the size of tonsil. Tonsillar size. Then look for the uh, soft palate and uvula. That is important. In the soft palate, look for the symmetry of the soft palate, mobility of the soft palate and height of the soft palate. So the height, then height, symmetry and mobility. How will you check the mobility of soft palate? That is by asking the patient to uh, produce a sustained production of sounds like E or I. So a sustained production of uh, E or I and look for mobility. Along with that height of this and also the symmetry. And uh, in the uvula, they mainly look for bifid uvula. That is important. Okay. And also palpate this area. That is also important. Palpation is very important. What are things? Particularly you have to look for submucous cleft palate and also posterior palatal notching. That has to be palpated. So soft palate and uvula along with the tonsillar size is important. And the ear go for an otoscopy and look for whether there is a retraction of tympanic membrane or there is uh, features of otitis media with effusion because eustachian tube uh, pathologies can lead to otitis media with effusion. So all these are very important. Nose, oral cavity, oropharynx and ear very important under physical examination. Uh, the third is assessment of voice production. So this uh, Perceptual speech analysis is the gold standard in the diagnosis of VPD and this is done by a speech language pathologist and the patient is asked to produce uh, all the three sounds that is uh, fricatives, fricatives and affocative sound. Do you know what all these sounds, what all these three means? Uh, 
um, that I'll explain in an, another class. Okay. So that you have to learn anyway. So fricative, plosive, and affricative sounds. Uh, patient is asked to produce these three. They are assessed for any hypernasal voice, uh, compensatory facial grimaces. I already told you why these grimaces are produced. So any hypernasal uh, voice, then uh, facial grimaces, and also. Um, misarticulation, art, uh, defects in articulation, all the three, mainly these three are. So the patient is asked to produce these three, fricative, plosive and affricative sound and they are assessed by any hypernasal voice, uh, any uh, facial grimacing and also uh, changes in or uh, fault in articulation of uh, sounds. And also a dental mirror is placed under the nostril while um, the uh, sound production time so that uh, the fogging will indicate how much uh, nasal flow is there. So that is assessed and this is the gold standard in the diagnosis of uh, VPD. Then imaging mainly uh, cephalometry and MRI. Cephalometry is a serial x-ray uh, taken. This, all these investigations we mainly do in children. So, cephalometry serial x-ray we uh, take on by the production of speech time and MRI by MRI is very uh, very good uh, imaging modality for diagnosing BPD. Yeah, in that we have to look specifically for the muscles. Already I enumerate the muscles. So, all the muscles, their insertion into the palate, into the soft palate uh, and any deformities uh, like especially in um, submucous cleft palate can be uh, identified by MRI. Advantage of MRI is lack of radiation, but in children to do MRI, see especially repeated MRI may need sedation. CT is usually not advised because the uh, high level of radiation and also the need for doing multiple times. So chance of uh, radiation exposure is very high and also um, mainly the bony details are seen in uh, CT scan. So MRI preferred to CT in case of uh, VPD. And what about the instrumental evaluation? What are the using? Video nasal endoscopy, multi-view fluoroscopy and nasometry comes under in instrumental evaluation. Of this, the video nasal endoscopy is a very good uh, assessment technique. Uh, by doing a video endoscopy of the nasal cavity, structures in the nasal cavity, nasopharynx, presence of adenoid or uh, other structures, obstructions, any obstructions of the uh, soft palate, any growth or mass in the uh, soft palate, all can be assessed. And the advantage is that a live uh, display of the structures on the monitor while doing a perceptual analysis of the uh, voice production by the speech pathologist can be done by using this video nasal endoscopy. So while uh, doing a uh, voice analysis, we can see the um, what, what happens within the nasopharynx and also uh, doing this while asking the patient to suck. At the time of sucking, do a video nasal endoscopy so that we can measure the uh, size of this uh, velopharyngeal gap, then exact location of the VP closure and also the uh, structural, any structural abnormalities all can be noted and this can be used as a guide at the time of uh, making a decision of whether to do a surgery or not. So in that sense this video nasal endoscopy is an excellent technique and multi-view video fluoroscopy can be done in children who are not uh, allowing to do for a video nasal endoscopy and nasometry we can measure the um, pressure uh, formed or the re nasal resonating uh, chamber column pressure in the nose. So these are the evaluation technique by doing a very thorough history, physical examination of mainly the nose, um, nasopharynx and oral cavity, uh, oropharynx and ear. Then assessment of speech production, imaging and instrumental evaluation. By doing all these, we come to a diagnosis of VPD. So coming to the treatment modalities of VPD, this uh, speech therapy and uh, oral prostate placement and surgery, all these can be tried. And what are the indications for a speech therapy? Speech therapy is done in case of mild VPD, very minimal uh, dysfunction. 
or in cases of uh, this VPD is due to uh, defect in articulation. Okay, so articulation errors. Or this can be done, this should be done post-operatively, even after surgery. Speech therapy should be given to the uh, patient at a regular intervals. Then oral processes are there. They are custom made oral processes by prosthodontist. And this is anchored to the maxillary teeth. So that while speech production this will elevate the soft palate. But it is poorly tolerated by the patient. But we can do that. Oral processes are usually given as a temporary measure. While uh, at the time. Sometimes the surgery will be staged procedure. So in that, during that period, this uh, oral process can be given. That is uh, before surgery as a temporary image. And also if the patient is very poor candidate, very high, uh, surgery cannot be done because of high risk. And uh, surgery is the definitive uh, treatment for VPD. And the surgery is done especially for uh, anatomical deformity or structural deformities with an aim to produce a seal between this nasal, nasal cavity and the oral cavity without causing any nasal obstruction. We are making a seal between the nose, nasopharynx and the or, uh, oropharynx but there is no nasal obstruction at all. So and usually this is done after 3 to 4 years of age because the child should be cooperative for an instrumental diagnosis of VPD. So that is why this 3 to 4 years of age is uh, taken uh, to do surgery. Before that we usually do not do a surgery for that corrective uh, surgery. And the, uh, there are mainly 4 surgical techniques. We have to make a seal between uh, nasal pharynx, nasopharynx and the oropharynx. So one is palate muscle reposition. Palate muscle repositioning surgery or we can go for a pharyngeal flap. Or sphincter pharyngoplasty. Or posterior pharyngeal wall augmentation. Augmentation. These are the uh, main types of surgeries done for uh, correction of VPD. Okay, so this is all about velopharyngeal dysfunction. We talked about the what is velopharyngeal dysfunction. We saw a video of how uh, air leaks through a velopharyngeal uh, uh, dysfunction. Then what are the causes of VPD? Then how to evaluate a VPD? And these are the treatment options. Thank you.